In Book 1 of his Principia, in the scolium at the end of the definitions, Newton claims that there is a such thing as absolute space, and that there is a such thing as absolute motion through this space. The problem is, it seems like every time we try to measure motion, all we do is measure relative motion, that is, motion of one object relative to another. Newton concedes that we cannot identify whether something is in absolute motion, that is, motion through this absolute space, for the case of linear or straight line motion. But, Newton argues, we can determine whether something is truly spinning. That is, we can determine if an object is rotating compared to this absolute space, the most fundamental reference frame of space itself. How does he claim this, or why does he claim this? And this is Newton's famous spinning bucket experiment. So I'm going to now describe the spinning bucket experiment. Okay, so Newton says, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase how he does this. He says, consider a bucket of water suspended from a ceiling, ceiling high overhead. So think about maybe like a cathedral or something with a huge domed ceiling, and there's a bucket suspended from the ceiling. So I'm going to draw here the ceiling. Okay, and I'm going to draw this bucket like this, and a handle on the bucket. And let's suppose that you hang this from a string, but this string, you, you twist the bucket up like this, so the string is all twisted, so this is a twisted cord from which the bucket is hung, so you spend some time twisting this up. Um, and let me draw the water that is in the bucket. So we've got this water that is in the bucket, like this, okay? So we've got this water in here, in the bucket, okay? And before you release the bucket, so it's all twisted up, before you release the bucket, the bucket is at rest with respect to, I'm going to write WRT, so I don't have to write with respect to, with respect to the room, or this big cathedral, right? So it's sitting still with respect to the room. It's not in relative motion compared to the room. The water also that is in the bucket is at rest with respect to the room. Once again, it's sitting in the bucket. The bucket's at rest, the water's at rest. So the water, this goes perhaps without saying, but I'll say it anyhow, the water is at rest with respect to the bucket. Okay, so there's three kind of straightforward observations. And the last straightforward observation is that the surface of the water, if you were to look into the bucket, you'd see the surface of the water is flat or plain. Right? So it's not curved at all. It's a, it's a flat surface of water up here. Okay, good so far. Nothing confusing here. Now, let's suppose that you suddenly release this bucket. The cord was all twisted up. So what happens just after you release the bucket? So I'm going to redraw the bucket here. I'm going to try to draw it to look the same. Okay, so you release the bucket, and just after you release it, the cord begins untwisting, and the bucket begins to spin around, right? But just when it begins spinning, the water, which had been sitting still, just as the bucket begins to spin, the water hasn't really begun to spin yet. So I'm going to draw the water in here, and I'll write down these observations like I did a moment ago. So just after you release the bucket, the bucket begins spinning, the bucket spins with respect to the room, right? So it is now spinning compared to or relative to the room. The water, however, at least initially, so it still is at rest with respect to the room, right? Because it hasn't begun spinning yet, okay? So what does this mean? If the bucket is spinning compared to the room, but the water is at rest compared to the room, it means the water is spinning with respect to the bucket, right? Because if the bucket is spinning, but the water is not spinning, then compared to the bucket, 
the water is spinning. So if you were like a bug resting on the bucket, which is spinning around, and you look down at the water, it would look to you like the water is spinning compared to the bucket. And finally, the surface of the water is flat, right? So it's still a flat surface of water. Okay, but what happens as the bucket is spinning, the water is going to begin spinning along with it. It's going to kind of speed up the edges that, you know, the walls of the bucket are going to exert a viscous force or a drag on the water, which gets the water spinning as well. So what happens after a while? After a while, the bucket is going to be spinning and the water is going to be spinning right along with the bucket. And at least momentarily, there will be a time when the water is going to be spinning at the same speed as the bucket. So this is when the string is totally untwisted. Of course, it's going to start twisting the other way, right, as it kind of overshoots. But at this moment, when the string is totally untwisted and the water is going to be spinning along with the bucket. So this means, so I'll draw like this. So here, the bucket is spinning with respect to the room, right? And furthermore, now the water is spinning also with respect to the room, right? Because it's spinning along with it. And at least at some moment in time, the water, because the bucket is spinning and the water is spinning, at some moment, the water is going to be at rest with respect to the bucket. And finally, the surface, I'll draw the water in a moment, the surface of the water is going to be curved. It's going to be kind of riding up on the side of the bucket. So I'm going to draw the water kind of like this. If you were to look at the surface of the water, you would notice that the surface of the water is curved. Right? Okay. And then, finally, this is the fourth step. This is the last step that Newton talks about. Finally, what happens after enough time is that you know, the water spinning, the bucket spinning, but as the cord begins to twist the other direction, eventually this bucket is going to come to a stop. Okay, so like this. So the, the, the cord gets retwisted, I guess, but in the opposite direction, right? As the bucket kind of overshoots like this. And eventually the bucket is going to come to a stop. So at this moment in time, the bucket is at rest with respect to the room, okay? And, but when the, at the moment the bucket comes to, the, to rest, the water is still going to be spinning, at least for a little while, right? So the water in this case is spinning with respect to the room still, at least for a little while. Eventually it'll probably come to a stop. But at this moment that I'm drawing, the water is still spinning with respect to the room. And hence, if the bucket is at rest compared to the room, but the water is spinning compared to the room, that means the water is spinning with respect to the bucket, right? And finally, if you were to look down at the surface of the water, you would see that the surface of the water is curved still. It's curved just like here. So let me draw the water. So the bucket's at rest, but the water is still spinning around and the surface of the water is going to be curved compared, you know, it's going to be look curved from the top, right? Okay, so this is the thought experiment that Newton goes through. Now, who cares? Why, why are we talking about this spinning bucket? What's the point of this entire thought experiment that Newton runs us through? So let me ask this question. What's the point? And more particularly, here's the thing that's of interest. What determines... What determines if the surface of the water is curved? What determines if the water surface is curved? After all, in some cases, the water surface is curved, and in some cases, the water surface is flat. So there must be something causing the surface of the water to curve. So let's consider one possible answer. Is it the motion of of the water with respect to the bucket. So is it the relative motion of the water with respect to the bucket? 
So if, if, if in other words, is the, is the water spinning compared to the bucket? If it is, it's curved. If it's not, it isn't. Would that be a good explanation? Well, in this case, the water is at rest with respect to the bucket. So in this case right here, and in this case right here, in the third case, it's at rest compared to the bucket and it's curved. And in this case, it's spinning compared to the bucket and it's curved. So here, in, in these two cases, in one it's at rest and in one it's spinning compared to the bucket, but they're both curved, right? And going back to this case, here it's at rest compared to the bucket and here it's spinning compared to the bucket. And in both cases, it's flat. So it seems like its motion compared to the bucket will not determine whether or not it's curved. Okay, so no, that doesn't explain whether or not it's going to be curved. Okay. Um, what about maybe it's its motion with respect to the room? Okay, so answer two. It's maybe it is it the motion of the water with respect to the room. Maybe that's what's causing the surface to curve. So in other words, was it sort of the walls of the cathedral or this big room around it that is causing it to curve? Well, I mean, how can walls or roof or whatever cause something to curve? Newton is very skeptical of this idea that it's actually the, the walls themselves or the motion compared to the walls that's causing it to curve. So he says, no, that's not going to be possible. But maybe it's it's the motion compared to like the floor or maybe something even bigger, like the earth itself. So maybe it's the motion of the water with respect to something huge, like the earth, it's spinning compared to the earth itself that causes it to curve. Is that possible? Well, no, says Newton. There's no reason that it's spinning relative to the earth would cause it to curve. That doesn't seem to make sense. Maybe it is the spinning of the object with respect to some physical object that causes it to curve. So, or any physical object. And Newton says, no, it's not, it's not the spinning of this water compared to a physical object that is causing it to curve. Newton says, what's causing this water to curve is the spinning of the bucket with respect, or the spinning of the water with respect to absolute space. So he says the reason the water is curved, the water surface is curved, is because it is truly spinning. It is truly spinning. And by that, we mean it is spinning in absolute space or with respect to this absolute reference frame. So spinning with respect to absolute space. That is, it is truly spinning. Because whether something is really spinning or not is going to determine whether it's curved, not whether it's spinning with respect to some particular physical object. The very fact that the water is curved, that the surface of the water is curved, says Newton, is evidence of an absolute frame of reference, that is, of absolute space. So although we cannot detect absolute linear motion, says Newton, through this absolute space, we can detect absolute rotational motion in space. And how do we know whether something is truly absolutely spinning? Well, there's these sort of forces of recession from the axis about which it's rotating. So if we think of this string right here as an axis of rotation, if it's spinning around this axis in absolute space, there's going to be these forces that try to make it recede from the axis that causes the surface of the water to curve. So this is Newton's proof. And he would say this is empirical or uh, yeah, empirical or observational, experimental proof of the existence of absolute space. Not just measuring space compared to physical objects, but the existence of an absolute space. I should mention at this point that Einstein is going to have to address this spinning bucket thought experiment. He spends a lot of time worrying about this experiment uh, because Einstein does not believe that there is a such thing as absolute space. He thinks that all spatial measurements are relative. It's nonsense to talk about absolute space. So somehow he must take very seriously the spinning bucket experiment of Newton.